Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Create with Kendra, a place where you can be inspired, challenged, and changed. It is such a beautiful day. It is honestly my favorite day. Wednesdays, right? A new episode drops every single week. We thank you all for tuning in constantly for our faithful listeners. We appreciate you for supporting this show. As y'all see, I have my good sis here, Jordan. She is going to be with us today. I invited her on, um, not just as a guest, but she is also our Black Creative of the Week. So Jordan, can you please let the folks know what your Black business is? All right, y'all. So my Black business, as you know, I do have another one. Okay. But, right, you see me? <laughs> no, but seriously, um, my black business, I am currently selling jewelry for $5 a piece. Like literally, it's amazing what you can do $5 at a time. So um, you can find me and all of my links at It's Your Love on Instagram. And feel free to reach out to me. Ask me any questions. All right now. Now, Jordan, I got a couple of orders because I need some bracelets, child. Okay. <laughs> I am super excited for this topic. Um, one of our listeners actually wrote in asking about forgiveness. Yeah. And I feel like this topic is something that we need to talk about all the time. Absolutely. Um, and I say that because life brings us a lot of disappointment, yeah. a lot of situations and a lot of people that come short, yeah. a lot of different offenses. And you can't live life without being offended. You can't go through this life without being crossed. Yeah. Um, and so um, we're going to talk about that today because it's something that we all need. So when it comes to forgiveness, what do you think of what comes to mind? Um, automatically salvation. That's the whole basis of the Christian faith is regarding being forgiven and the fact that God loved us so much that he gave his son to us so that we could be forgiven and have that chance of walking in holiness. Mm. It, forgiveness for me is amazing. I love it. I absolutely love it. That's beautiful. And I love that you said salvation because our offense first, like just off jump, our offense to God <laughs> in the garden, you want to go back to the garden. It brought <laughs> sin into the world. Yeah. It brought wickedness into the world yeah. and it brought death. Yeah. And God loved us so much that he sent his son. This, if you ever have an issue with forgiving somebody, it is so important that we remind ourselves what Jesus did on the cross in order to forgive our sins. Yeah. It got so bad for him. To where he asks his father, take this cup. if you can take this cup from me, <laughs> if there is a way out yeah. and another way to do it that I don't have to go through this, give me a plan B. Right. Something. Something. But then he thought. Yes. And thank you, Jesus, for thinking of us. Yes. Girl, we getting deep already. Look, okay. <laughs> then he thought about us. Yeah. He thought about you. He thought about me. He thought about you and said, nevertheless, not my will. Thank you, Lord. That will be done. Thank you, Father. And so I just think, like you said, that is the ultimate example of forgiveness. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. What do you think of when you initially think of forgiveness? I think of Joseph. In Genesis chapter 37. Um, I honestly can relate to Joseph. Yeah. Like I feel like Joseph is me. <laughs> in in the in the sense of like God having favor on his life. And y'all, y'all go to Genesis 37 That's good. and read that. And keep reading and keep reading his story because his story is so is so powerful. When we when we think about him being the youngest yeah. of his siblings. I'm the youngest of my siblings, right? And there is favor over Joseph's life because his father was able to have him 
at an old age. And so Joseph's siblings didn't like that. And when you think about the favor on your life, the calling on your life, and how people can be offended by that, Mm -hmm. just for you being you, You don't even have to have done anything, but just for you being you, God's favor being on your life, people can be offended by that. And so his brothers sold him into slavery. Spoiler alert, but go read it because it's juicy. His brothers (laughs) sold him into slavery. When he was working as a slave, he got favor again. The favor followed that man. Yes. Got favor again. Got accused of adultery with a married woman. Mm-hmm. Old girl lied on him. He ends up in prison. Yeah. Gets favor in prison, and then becomes <laughs> becomes a leader in Egypt. How do you go from being sold in slavery to, to being dang near the king? Right, Pharaoh's right hand. How? The favor of God. But the thing about it is, Joseph had to learn how to forgive. He had to learn how to forgive his brothers from selling him into slavery. He had to learn how to forgive Potiphar's wife for lying on him, saying that he raped her. Not so. And what I love about his story is that Joseph had to learn how to forgive in order for God to use him. Oh my gosh, that that is so good. In order for him to to for God to use him, he had to forgive. Yeah, absolutely. Because if he didn't, and what I notice is that unforgiveness will paralyze you. It will stagnate you so fast. (laughs) Um, In the Bible, Jesus talks about um, forgiving others as God forgave you. And if you do not forgive others, then God will not forgive you. And he says it right after the Lord's Prayer in, what is that, Mark 6? Mm -hmm. So literally in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. And in that same chapter, y'all, he talks about forgiving those who have offended you or God will not forgive you. It's insane. Yeah. It's the minimal grace that you can give someone. It's grace. It's absolutely grace. Because I can offend you. Right. And and not mean to offend you. Yeah. But if you hold on to it, you're going to treat me different. When we get around each other, you ain't gonna be speaking to me. Mm-hmm. Like it's it just it just causes tension, not with just within the relationship, yeah. but within your body. Absolutely. There are so many things that release in your body based off of your emotions. You can literally go and have a stroke from too much stress, you can have a heart attack, all of these things based off of you not being able to give that love to someone that they probably need in the first place. They probably don't even know they offended you. So extending that grace is not just for the person that you're forgiving, it's for yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's funny that you said that because I'm actually, (laughs) Proverbs 17, whoever would foster love covers over an offense, but whoever repeats the matter separates close friends. Mm. Once you forgive, let it go. Say it again. Because <laughs> like we were saying, like, hold, look, holding that grudge, it will stagnate your ministry. It'll stagnate your personal walk, like in your job. If you feel like your boss did something to you, you're not going to have that same respect for them. And that's going to make you not do your job properly. That's a hostile work environment. Come mm-hmm. on, HR folks. I, right. you, we're here. Yeah. So it's like you have to extend that grace. And there might be some people that are listening to this that say, hey, Kendra, hey, Jordan, that sounds really nice. But how do I do that? 
Mm-hmm. Right. What are the practical tools that I can use to implement this grace? I think it's a really important strategy for us to use mm-hmm. is to replace or to fill the 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 opportunity for bitterness and, and unforgiveness with tools of the spirit. Absolutely. With fruit of the spirit, with what the Lord says that we have to do. And I say that because I remember I was offended. Somebody offended me. I do get offended. (laughs) Somebody offended me and I was having issues telling this person, like, you offended me. And a lot of the time we are very quiet about our offenses and we don't tell people or you may not feel the courage to tell somebody that, you know, you hurt my feelings or whatever. Yeah. And I had called one of my mentors and I said, I feel like bitterness is coming right now. Mm-hmm. I feel like the seed of bitterness is building up. Yeah. And she said, Kendra, I want you to study bitterness. Mm-hmm. And I want you to study unforgiveness. Mm-hmm. And I did. And what I what I learned, what helped me with that is that I learned in that moment that I can't change people's thought process. Yeah. I can't change people's actions. And that I had to deal with my emotions one step at a time. Yeah. Because I'm the kind of person is like, I want to take care of all of it (laughs) all at once, but it needed to be one step at a time and acknowledging, yo, I feel like I'm becoming bitter was that step. And then also, like you said, extending grace. What does extending grace look like to you, Jordan? Like you said, pretty much as far as not making everything personal, you don't know what's happening on that other end. Whatever that person is going through, maybe they just had a bad day and they didn't know that, you know, you've been waiting in line for 15 minutes and they didn't even see you because they're focused on trying to get to their grandmother's house. Like, Mm -hmm. so they cut you. Mm -hmm. Instead of, you know, getting buck and crunk and everything, Mm -hmm. just be like, hey, you know, everything all right? I was standing here. Mm -hmm. If you need to go, go ahead. Kindly correcting people. Don't be afraid of your emotions. Feel them, acknowledge them, deal with them. Mm -hmm. And as you said, like that bitterness beginning to fester, all major emotions start as a seed. They start small. So that minor offense or an offense, major or minor, (laughs) once that happens to you yeah it's going to cause trauma it's going to cause resentment it's going to cause bitterness if it's not checked immediately and the longer you linger and i had to <laughs> i had to really think on this procrastination is the devil's playground oh jesus You think that you're doing yourself a service by going ahead and just being like, you know what, I'm going to just let it pass. Because once it happens again, then you're going to be like, I should have said something the first time. Mm -hmm. And then that's going to grow resentment, not just towards that person, but towards yourself because you feel like you can't stand up for yourself. Ooh. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. (laughs) Y'all, this is so good to me. Like, holding things in, you may not act on that grudge, but it's still a grudge. It's still resentment. And that can fester even deeper into bitterness, hatred, rage. Short-tempered. Exactly. And you could take that out on somebody that doesn't even offend you. Because you didn't deal with that seed. Let's talk about dealing. (laughs) Um... (laughs) Because I heard this, I was I was watching a show, and there's this saying that is oftentimes used, like it's called it's, it says time heals all wounds. 
Hmm. I don't really think so. I mean, like, I just feel like, <laughs> what are you doing with this time? Right. Determines your healing. Right. If there was a a blow up, um, an episode, a, a something between you and this other person, right? Yeah. And time goes on and you don't deal with this correctly, there will be no healing. Oh, absolutely not. There will be no healing. Time will heal the wound if you put in the work. That's oh. Time will heal the wound if you surrender your will. Mm. Time will heal the wound if you give up position of unforgiveness. Jesus. Time will deepen the wound. Oh, yeah. If you remain in that place. I'm sorry, y'all. This is good to me. Mm. I seen it. I seen it with so many people. Yeah. And this is why, am I going here? I guess I am. <laughs> this is why I feel like conversations like this is really healthy, especially in the Black community. How many families, how many Black families have the, we don't talk about this, we don't deal with these emotions. We don't deal with these feelings. If something happens, I'm just going to ignore it. Mm-hmm. Before it was, we don't talk about Bruno. We Ben was doing that. Like, <laughs> we Ben was doing that. Seriously. Seriously. How come this five-year-old child can't tell his mama that you hurt my feelings? How come this 14-year-old boy can't tell, you know, my dad or their dad, you know, I don't like the way you did this. Mm -hmm. How come brothers and sisters or friends or whoever is in this relationship can't speak what is happening? It's a pride thing. Do you... (laughs) It is so important that we speak it. And there's another thing I want to say. You speaking it can be to that person. Mm -hmm. It can be in a journal. Absolutely. Always take it in prayer. Absolutely. You can speak it to a therapist. Yeah. You can speak it to a counselor. And if if you speak it to the person that offended you, don't expect them to understand. Yeah. You don't have to expect them to understand. Yeah. As long as you get it off of you. Absolutely. Because the whole going back and forth, you don't understand, you can't make people. I learned that one. You can't make people change their mind about you. You can't make people change their mind about what they did. But we have to get it off. Mm-hmm. To those that are listening, ask yourself, what is it that I'm holding mm-hmm. that I've never spoken yet? Oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. Bible says in, in, in James chapter 4 to, con- to confess your sins to one another. Mm-hmm. Look, y'all. <laughs> this girl right here. <laughs> I didn't came over here a couple times. And don't confess your sins to, to any and everybody, especially oh, somebody yeah. to be running their mouth. Yeah. But to, to a believer, yeah. to say, hey, sis, I'm struggling with this. Yeah. Or like I told y'all, I called my mentor and I was like, I feel bitterness coming. Like, yeah. can you help me? Give me some scripture. Give me some prayer. Give me some wise counsel. I confessed it. Yeah. And to the person that wrote in, you confessed it. Yeah. And I believe that God is going to heal you. And I believe God is going to really work in you. Yes, God. But take those steps. And when I think about and going back to Joseph, there are so many opportunities for us to be petty. <laughs> because <laughs> unforgiveness, there are like petty clauses in unforgiveness. Absolutely. When there was a famine in the land and Joseph's brothers came to the palace where he worked to get food because there was a famine. They didn't recognize Joseph. Right. Because last time they seen him, he was 17. He was in a ditch and they sold him. Yeah. Now he's a grown man. Now he's in jewels. And I can imagine him being in a robe and being on the throne. And they coming to him asking him for help. 
So, Joseph has the opportunity to either forgive and be used by God or to be petty yeah. and stay in his unforgiveness. Now, Joseph had a bit of, you know, he had a petty moment. He really did. He he was messing with them. Yeah. He told them to go get um, his other brother and he was holding people hostage and he was making them big and all this yeah. other kind of stuff. And that was the human side of him. But what Joseph did not do, he did not sit mm. in bitterness. Like I said, if he would have sat in bitterness from the time they sold him to slavery, he would not, he would not have ended up where he was. Because unforgiveness paralyzes you. Yeah. It gives you a disadvantage. All the good things that can come from you, joy, love, celebration, um, healthy relationships, all of that is paralyzed. Yeah. yeah. It's so true. And that was, I'm telling y'all, y'all go read Genesis 37 all the way to, where's it at? Because it's, it's juicy. It's so good. This is so good. All the way to, I believe. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> All the way, I think, I, I, I believe to like 52. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All the way to like 52. Just read it. Yeah. Just read it. It's so good. Because it. you'll see all of the offenses, all the many times people had framed him and, yeah. and called and, you know, just lied on him and all this other kind of yeah. stuff. And he did not choose to sit there. I'm going to be honest. Um, forgiveness sometimes the seat feels very comfortable. Real comfortable. You feel like you're in control. But the reality is, you sit there too long, you're going to decay. Ugh. It's going to eat you up. Yeah. Jesus, help, Lord. There are some things things that people feel are unforgivable. Yeah. I apologize. <laughs> but there are some things that people feel are unforgivable that God has forgiven that offender of. And because you hold that with you, your testimony is hindered. Because by the time that they've received that forgiveness from God, they may or may not hold on to you. You may never see that person again, mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. And they could be thinking, you know, I really did that person wrong. And I really wish I could have forgave or could have apologized and could have done this, could have done that. And you're on your end. I could never. Mm-hmm. And so how you were speaking about Joseph and how he, yeah, he played with his brothers. And he was so, <laughs> I was look, like, really? <laughs> look, I, I, I can't, I can't speak on, I, I can't really judge Joseph. that action. Yeah. Cause I mean, I'm, I'm pretty petty. Mm -hmm. I can be very petty. Mm -hmm. That That is my flesh, y'all. My flesh can be petty. But that growth in which when he revealed himself, to his family, all of the conviction, yeah, all of the memories mm -hmm. on how they treated him when he did nothing wrong, but be who God called him to be. God gives the best whoopings. Hello. <laughs> Stop holding on to that grudge and give it to God. And I can guarantee you that everything that you felt will be paid for. Everything that is within you that you feel has been wrong, damaged, um, overlooked, God is going to set you up to where they can't say anything, but I'm sorry. Wow. 
Jesus. God speak now. Hallelujah. When we sit in the idle seat of unforgiveness, we are our own boundary. And there's many times when, you know, that 70 times seven crosses my mind. Yeah. And I'm very much like Peter in that way. So, Lord, you know. You pulling out your calculator? <laughs> <laughs> Low key. I, I, I pulled out my calculator when I very first read it. I was like, okay, God. So, if I forgive them, what is it, like 400 something times, I'm good, right? He said, it, like, he spoke to me clear as day. He said, how many times have I forgiven you? How many times do you expect me to forgive you? Every time, Lord. <laughs> and he was like, return the favor. Yeah. And he took me to Luke. Let's go. He took me to Luke. And everybody loves to say this verse during offering. Okay. What they be saying, real? <laughs> they love saying this during offering. They love saying it during offering. But you have to read prior to get the context. Come on, Bible teacher. <laughs> so Luke 6, 37. Okay. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Mm -hmm. They not just talking about money, y'all. They're not just talking about that $5 seed that you're getting ready to put in the offering basket. Nope. Right. <laughs> <laughs> They're talking about how you love one another, mm -hmm. talking about how you forgive. I mean, clear as day. Forgive, and you will be forgiven, and it will be multiplied to you. Mm -hmm. When you condemn someone for something that they did, like, this is the thing. Cancel culture gets on my nerves. So. I mean. <laughs> In real life gets on my nerves. Let's talk about it. So when you see somebody commit an offense in public, and you commit that same offense in private. Oh. And you're bashing them on Twitter, like Twitter fingers going, okay? But you commit that same offense in private and you're like, I just really want the world to see me for who I truly am. Let me roll my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't condemn someone for something that you are capable of doing. Yeah. When you see someone commit an offense, I mean, you can be kind and Christian, correct them, in love, mm -hmm. correct them, but don't judge them, don't down talk them, because we're all learning. Mm -hmm. The church itself is a people, but we're all being healed. Yeah. None of us are perfect. Yeah. No one except Jesus was perfect. Amen. And God, in all of his holiness and all of his grace and mercy that he bestows on us, he says, I forgive you. Thank you, Lord. No matter the offense, Oof. he forgives you. Thank you, Lord. And don't let nobody tell you that he doesn't. Hello? Because that is the enemy's favorite trick right there. You're not worthy of his forgiveness. But he set me to where I be, can be forgiven. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did. It's an attainable goal placed by God. Yeah. Amen. I, I just get so excited off of this. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, it, it, and it's only through God that you can do these things, such as forgiving, loving someone unconditionally, the act of love not the emotion of love oh 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 <laughs> look because just being real 
Kendra and I are, we're both married women. Love is a task. It's a joy. Don't get me wrong. But it's something you have to work at and you have to choose it. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing with forgiveness. You have to choose to forgive someone. And in that process, forgive yourself. I'm sorry, I'm just going on. Go on. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> but when you choose to forgive someone, that is a conscious decision, whether or not they deserve your forgiveness. Mm -hmm. That is you showing them the best version of God that they will probably ever see. That's good, sis. That is good. And I want to remind y'all, forgiveness don't always feel good. It's dirty work. <laughs> so for the person that wrote in, for the people that are listening to this, you choosing to forgive this person, it ain't going to feel good. Mm -mm. But if you choose to be in position to forgive out of obedience of God, God will make it easier. He'll make it easier. And I was telling you, Jordan, um, that I remember there was a, I was I was offended mm -hmm. by someone, and I literally felt I had every right to be mad. I had every right to be petty. I had every right to to be on the defense. Yeah. But God moved my. I felt it, y'all. This ain't never happened to me before, and I pray this is not the last time it ever happens. God moved my heart towards compassion yeah. to this person. So no longer am I in position of offense, yeah. but I'm in, I'm in position of intercession. Yeah. Because I need to pray for this person. Yeah, I got the I got the 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 burn from it, but I need to pray for this person. And God softened my heart. So for anyone that is dealing with unforgiveness, pray this prayer. God, soften my heart yes. so that you can move it towards compassion, mm -hmm. so that you can move it towards forgiveness. That is my prayer for you. Jordan, do you have any last words to share with the people Ugh. about forgiveness and <laughs> anything? Um, oh, gosh, I'm just so full right now. Amen. Forgiveness, as we talked about, could be someone's one and only chance of seeing God. When you choose forgiveness, you are exhibiting the main characteristic of our Heavenly Father mm -hmm. that draws us to Him. Thank you, Lord. I mean, I could speak for myself. I'd rededicated my life to Christ based off of a sermon about forgiveness. I had went through the most traumatic event of my life. And in that moment, I was able to say, you know what, Lord, I trust you and I forgive. Wow. I remember that. You hear me that. Mm -hmm. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. To let things go. Yeah. In a healthy manner. And not just push it to the back of your mind and shove it deep in your spirit mm -hmm. and try to, you know, smooth pavement over it like it's not there. Because mm -hmm. even as the weeds grow through a sidewalk, mm. Ooh. that thing will come back up. And it'll eat at you again and again and again. So when you allow God to use you through forgiveness, I just say, remember that all glory is his. All of it. All of the glory is his. Yeah. And when people ask you, how can you forgive them? They did this, that, the third, and then some. Mm-hmm the grace of God. Mm -hmm. I mean, because God forgave me. Yes. And because God forgave me. If God sees me as worthy, mm -hmm. 
What makes me think I'm any better? Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah, that's Ooh. it. <laughs> <sighs> Let's all take a breath together. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> I really hope that this helped um, someone begin their journey of forgiveness. It's not easy. Yeah. And it may be comfortable to sit in the seat of unforgiveness. But God has so much more for you. Yes. And if you surrender that to him, and if you practice forgiveness every day, mm-hmm. and if you pray over yourself and even like go to a, a trusted friend, a brother and sister in Christ and say, hey, I'm struggling today with this. Can you pray for me? God will honor that. Absolutely. God honors obedience. Mm-hmm. Obedience is an action. Yeah. Obedience is an action. I hear the Lord say that obedience is an action. You can think about it, but if you don't act on it, it's disobedience. Yeah. All right. Jordan. Yeah. Do you mind praying? I want you to pray over um, everyone that's listening to this and uh, yeah, just close this out in prayer. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now, God, thanking you for this absolutely beautiful and marvelous day, oh God. Right now, we lift up our brothers and sisters who are struggling with unforgiveness, Lord. Yes, Lord. We ask that you help us to learn from your word what it is to forgive. Yes, Lord. And what it is to be more like you and to walk in holiness so that we can be closer to you, oh God. We're not perfect. You made us as such, and you already know how we can be sometimes, oh God. But we thank you that you forgive us. We thank you that you extend grace and mercy. And we thank you for who you are in all of your glory, oh God. Yes, Lord. We bless you and we praise you. We lift you higher and higher, oh God. Yes, God. And we just say that through all things that we've done, oh God. Though we are undeserving, oh Father, you've always stepped in to prove us wrong. Mm -hmm. We thank you for that, Father. And please continue to remind us of that when we're faced with unforgiveness. Give us that conviction. Give us that peace afterwards. And continue to move in our lives thereafter. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, y'all, that is the word of the week. Thank you again, Jordan, for joining us, for sharing what God has placed on your heart with the listeners. Y'all, if you know anyone that needs this message, share with them. Send the YouTube link, send the link from Apple Podcasts or Spotify, and let's get this message out of there. Clips from the reels, send those to people because this are these are the conversations we need to have in order to grow in Christ, in order to be better. Um, for each other. All right, y'all. Until next week, be blessed.